Hey, and welcome to Hopcast. Thanks for coming back, everybody. I'm Brad Chmielewski. My name is Ken Hunnameter. And we're giving up beer. <laughs> I don't. We can't even call ourselves a Hopcast anymore. We're going to drink ciders on this one. Oh my god! But, uh... <laughs> Disgrace to the internet. <laughs> yeah, everyone's paying attention so hard. <laughs> Uh, but we, we're going to drink a couple of ciders from our buddy Greg Hall. Right, at Virtue Cider. So um, they're a, a cider uh, and, and farm now. They're growing their own apples, although that takes a while, up in Fenville, Michigan. And they do kind of a lot of stuff uh, locally in Fenville and then a lot uh, out here in Chicago because that's kind of the closest uh, big city. It's, mm-hmm. you know, his home and... and uh, and that sort of thing. So yeah, and I know they expanded like their get their ciders now in Portland too. Yep, like, that's a big cider market, I guess. Yeah, yeah, big cider market out there. I actually was um, out there for work and happened to be on the same floor as Greg at the same <laughs> hotel. So we we partied and, and drank a lot of, a lot of cider. Nice. Um, and that was that was a good time. But uh, they they're making really really great stuff. He was kind of the one that opened my eyes to what cider could be. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was used to the kind of woodchucks and your crispins and all that stuff, sure. back sweetened type ciders, and they're doing more uh, traditional um, European dry ciders. Okay. So uh, something that I quickly was like, oh, wow, this oh, is well, a totally are, different world. These are different. I thought it's apple and apple, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, we ferment it. It's fine. Cider, cider, right? <laughs> no. Not the case. So uh, the dude's always been kind of on the on the the pulse, had his finger on the pulse of what's happening next. And so we uh, should get him is... for what's next, right? Even after cider, like yeah, we should know what's next. Um, hmm. What is it? Uh, Mead is that? Nah, I don't know. Mead's probably already be doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. What's next after cider? Schnapps. White whiskey. Yeah. White <laughs> Rapa. Whiskey. <laughs> Rapa. <laughs> We've been drinking grappa before we know it. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, um, we've got a couple of different ciders. One that they're teaming up with a, a local farm here in Illinois. And then we have uh, a, the Percheron, which is a cider that's aged in wine barrels with some Britannomyces. So some familiar type of concepts there. Okay. So we should probably start with the, I guess, more traditional cider and then go to the one with the... With the funky oh, stuff? And funk and I, I would think so. Okay. So. Let's crack her open. Well, really nice, clear color here. Yeah, um, great would, clarity on it. I would say clear, except for these like blank plankton that are like <laughs> around in here. Yeah, there's tiny little, um, almost f- small feather-like things. So we don't know if these are uh, little different proteins or, or what. But other than that, very clear, yeah. um, is, which is typical for, for a cider. Um, it smells crisp and fruity. Yeah, kind of a, a vinous character there, too. So certainly a complex aroma, not your typical just you're smelling apple juice and booze mm-hmm. type no, of thing. Champagne-like. Even. Mm-hmm. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh, that's got bite. It definitely has a wine-like character to it, almost. Uh, you know, white wine. Um, six point eight. Yeah, a hefty kick with, at six point eight. This is a a cider that they're making. They're, they have a series now where they're highlighting uh, fruit from specific farms, and this is from Nichols Farm in Moringa, Illinois. Um, this is going to be the only farm that they're doing from Illinois, and I think there's been a a long relationship that been established between uh greg and and the nichols farm so no okay. surprise there but uh really a complex cider um yeah so it would more than likely since it's just apples from that farm it'd be a mix of apples do i guess do farms have different apples they grow or do they just grow one kind of apple uh they definitely have different different kinds of apples i'm not sure if this is just one variety or not i'm, I'm sure they they grow a few different kinds uh but these are acidic apples uh it says from the label there and <clears throat> that's kind of what you want to use when you're making cider it wouldn't just be like an apple that you pick up at the supermarket you want kind of a, a, a little bit more acid content okay. in there so it's not overwhelmingly sweet i mean this is a really dry acidic cider yeah so i guess 
are the apples grown for different purposes like on a farm so they're not just you know eating apples definitely i mean you're growing you're growing apples specifically to make cider out of it okay uh, you would not want to pick one of those off the tree and eat it. It's, okay. You just, it It'd would be, be like way too bitter and tart. Face. Okay. So hmm. um, this is it's kind of cool. Yeah. <clears throat> they uh, have have planted some apple trees out there, but I think it takes something like 10, 15 years in before Fenville? Yep. In, in Fenville, right? Okay. Uh, where the where the cider house is, and now they have two actually. They've, two they've, trees. <laughs> two hi- two cider houses. Okay. They've they built a second and they're expanding, oh, and wow. uh, so they got some trees out there just kind of for fun, I think. Um, well, yeah, fifteen years. That's, that's it's going to be a while before time. they see like a... any sort of return on that. Yeah, you're really hedging your bets on. <laughs> that. But you know they're they're kind of going for the farm type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, global, far, farm global, to glass. Global warming is going to screw that whole thing up. <laughs> <laughs> Global warming and the deer. <laughs> yeah, damn deer. So, uh, yeah, they're they're just growing stuff for fun at this point. I don't think they'll ever uh, grow enough apples to actually like do a bunch of cider with that. Yeah, because seeing the videos and stuff, the amount of apples it takes to make even quite a bit quantity. Yeah, it's yeah. nuts. Um, so, have you had this cider from them before? I've actually had both of these before. Okay. So. Um, I mean, I just I just really like what they're doing. They're doing something that's a little different than what typical people typically think of as, as cider, and uh, that's that's a dry, a little bit more complex type of character that you're going to find for it uh, from it. Um, very wine like, kind of champagne like. Mm-hmm. That's that sort of thing. So there's a little bit more to uh, what a lot of people think or know of as cider. Yeah, I tend to almost pick a cider almost on if I see it on the menu after maybe couple other drinks and i just want to change or something like i don't know i'll go with a virtue or a vandermill it's like oh try that and then maybe figure out where to go from there i mean they're i mean one thing to say about these be- or ciders is that they're <laughs> insanely refreshing i mean you you can whether it's uh whether you should or not you can certainly throw these back i mean this is like a seven percent beverage right here and i could like slam this all day long oh, yeah. it probably wouldn't end up very well for me but no and you're gonna go broke because these be these <laughs> say too. These ciders like it's like fifteen yeah. twenty dollars for these bombers or these seven hundred fifty milliliters. Yeah. Yeah, they're high price point for sure. I mean, there's a a lot of work and a lot of money that goes into making these things, so it kind of makes sense. But uh, you gotta, you're gonna pay a premium. You gotta pay for that tree for fifteen years. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Exactly right. I I like this one, and we usually see like what red streak and. Mitten and what's the other one we see around the? Uh, there's Cedra de Nava. They have La Panette as well. La Panette, yeah. Uh, Red Streak's kind of their their flagship, and Mitten would be bourbon barrel aged. Uh, they have La Panette, which is aged in um, wine barrels, I believe. Okay. <clears throat> and then what was the other one we mentioned? Cedra. Cedra de Nava is a is a Spanish style cider, so they have they have quite a line there for being not all that old. Right. Yeah. But like two years something like three that years now two, two three two. years probably two, two i think yeah but uh yeah so they're they're doing well and pumping out some good stuff and we got another one good that's good that's coming up so Ooh, well let's finish this off and move on cheers this is not looking good for us because we've almost finished this bottle <laughs> yeah we did typically kind of go halfway down and then move on to the next but we yeah we crushed that bottle Whew. so uh but on to the next yeah. we've All got right. <laughs> don't let it uh get us down we've got percheron uh, a wild fermented cider All right so. coming in at five and a half percent yeah so we're gonna tame it down a little bit Whew. so we got very similar color as the Nicholas, um, but no head this time. I think felt like we had a little bit of mm-hmm. head there. You don't typically see uh, too much head with with ciders. I think uh, most likely from the from the acid level that's that's in there, okay. kind of just kills it and washes it away. But uh, I mean, very clear. Right. <laughs> no, uh, no floaty plankton things this time. <laughs> Yeah, I have leftover. I didn't rinse my glass, so. Yeah. Oh. 
crazy aroma on this beer. I mean, uh, we're we're definitely getting some well, yeah, wild yeast character and that oak. A little bit of oak. Obviously, apple, and there's a little bit of spiciness going on too. Yeah, it kind of tingles the nose a little bit. Yeah. There's something else. Oh, think about it. There's something else there. Well, <laughs> yeah, this is a little uh, sweeter than than the Nichols Farm, and also very spicy. I think that's what we're getting from this uh, from the Brutanomyces. Yeah. But you almost get a, it's not a tartar apple. It's more of a, I guess, like a red delicious kind of apple. It's like a... It tastes a little bit more earthy and a little bit more rustic than the uh -huh. other, which was extremely clean and more wine-like. But yeah, that funkiness is adding to it, and it's giving it a whole other level, too. Yeah, wow. and it, 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 what's interesting about this is that, like, the Britannomyces does a little bit something different than it does with beer yeah. when it ferments apples. Um, not quite as barnyard-like, uh, just a little bit more spicy and earthy. Yeah. Um, would there be, I guess, would there be a reason there? Or there's just, it's still... I'm not smart enough to know no? that. No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where's our science person? Yeah. We're Jay. We need Jay. <laughs> yeah, we do need Jay. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you're kind of seeing an influence from when Greg was, was brewing beer and what he was doing with, with that and bringing it over to cider, you know, doing uh, fermenting stuff in oak with Britannomyces like he was doing with Sophie and then bringing it over to his new venture with cider, which is pretty interesting. Yeah. Something that I, I, don't, I don't know too many people that are doing that kind of stuff. Doing barrel-aged ciders? Uh, or, yeah, with wild yeast and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's gonna be got to be a small number. Right now, I think what I'm getting from this is maybe almost like a, a more of a white wine taste from it. Yeah, I could see maybe with with the sweetness, maybe more like a riesling or something like that. Yeah. And it's so it's so light compared to the the nickels that it's just it's it's gonna be gone before I like <laughs> yeah. figure out what I'm drinking here. <laughs> So th this is a, a traditional cider from the Normandy region of France, uh, where they would actually pull the apples um, by cart that was pulled by a horse called a Percheron, and okay. they'd bring them to uh, the cider house where they would make the make the cider, and they would actually age that cider in oak barrels with wild yeasts. So Greg spent a lot of time traveling around Europe, and taking all these influences to for all his different ciders. Okay. Making English ciders, uh, Spanish ciders, uh, French ciders, all, all sorts of different stuff. Um, spent a lot of time researching this kind of thing. It's not like he went in willy-nilly. He was he was out right. there doing his work, his homework for sure. So, so our, I think the work's paid off. So the thoughts, are ciders like even more popular in Europe than they are here? Like Way more just, popular out there than we they are just, here. We're just yeah. behind the times. Okay. Uh, you're starting to see it gain popularity. Um, there's there's more and more kind of artisan cider makers popping up. Okay, so it's following an almost similar track as beer did, right? Absolutely. I mean, all this stuff came from the old world uh, originally and just took us a little the, while to catch the, up, but the, we'll, we'll take over it. The new eventually. world knows. It knows. It's going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so soon we'll probably see more, like, we're, now we're starting to get, like, French craft beers and all these other Italian craft beers, and then they start seeing some of these ciders coming over and importing ciders. And... Well, you, I mean, you can find that now. You go to the, your local Whole Foods oh. and you'll find ciders from uh, Dupont and Normandy that are excellent. So okay. certainly check those out and, and gauge them against some of these American-made ciders. They're, I mean, they're phenomenal. Those are some of the first ciders that I tried that were actually very, very good, and okay. it was because Greg introduced me to those. So. Oh, interesting. Do you think most of our apples here were consumed? Were like they weren't used for cider eating before, and they were mostly used to like, hey, we need to eat these. No, I think and they they would grow them specifically for that reason. Like you, you either grow them for okay. your eating, it's totally or different. drinking. It's a totally different tree. Yeah, it's okay. it's totally different. Hmm. Okay. But uh, yeah, some great stuff coming out of Fenville, Michigan, and um, happy for our our buddy over there. Yeah.
and it's always fun to see new stuff he puts out. It comes out fast all of a sudden. Yeah. So, yeah. New and exciting stuff. That's what it's all about. Cheers, and thanks for watching. Cheers.